And John and Susan's daughter Kelly joins us now. Good morning, and I'm sorry you're here under yeah, these so terrible sorry. circumstances. Um, so you're in Hagada. This is the Steen Gumberger um, Aqua Magic Hotel. You've been there for a few days. What's the hotel like um, when when you went in there first of all? What were your first impressions? Lovely. It was a really nice hotel. We were all having a fabulous holiday, and up until the incident that happened. We had no complaints. Didn't see anybody, you know, getting sick or... No, so nothing. Food no, poisoning, nothing. no mention of food poisoning no, or anything No food like that. poisoning, it was clean, it was tidy. We had no complaints at all. So you've got your mum and your dad and you've got your three children with you. So on Monday the 20th of August you'd all been out for dinner. And then was your mum and your eldest Molly that returned back to the room? They returned back to the room, yeah, on their own. And they, they, could, have, they could smell something in the room, yeah. a not very nice smell. No, as soon as they opened the door they both instantly said, what's that smell? and okay. they knew that there was a certain smell. So the way you'd organised the rooms for this holiday yeah. was that your mum and dad were with, Ho with uh, my, Molly. Yeah, my eldest. Yeah, and then you're in the other room down with the, the down with children. Jessica and with Jackson. That's yeah? right, yeah. OK, so yeah. You're, you're sharing that, but Molly yeah. was in Molly with was them. with mum and dad, yeah. And, and she was quite uh, acute to this smell, wasn't she? She was, yeah. She actually fell asleep um, in the room and then she woke up to say to my mum that she didn't feel very well and that she wanted to come and spend it back with me the mm. evening with myself. And that was at 1.30 in, your yeah, mo in the morning that your dad yeah. brought her back? Yeah, Mum phoned me up and she just said, Molly's not so well, I'm really sorry to wake you up, but can we send her back up? And I said, yeah, that's fine, not a problem. And she came up back to the room with Dad. Well, thank God she did, because that was the last yeah. time that you saw your dad healthy. That's right. Yeah. And how were they when they went to bed? Absolutely fine. We were having a really good evening, we'd been playing cards, um, everyone was really happy, and there was, we were just all fine. And then the next morning, you the always met morning. your mum. Mum always downstairs organising some beds and all that yeah. sort of business. So, yeah, uh, so yeah. she's, she was always down there first. Yeah. And you go down to breakfast. Yeah. And uh, and expect to see them down there. Yeah, and they weren't there. So I thought, well, maybe they're having a lion because they didn't have any children with them. And then I thought, about ten thirty, something's not quite right. So that's when I knocked on the door and knew something was seriously wrong. And when you knocked on the door, and I know that this is still obviously very raw and incredibly painful for you, but. When you opened the door, in, in the best way you can possibly, mm -hmm. what, what did you find? Dad came to the door um, and I knew straight away from looking at him, looking at his manner, that there was something really seriously wrong with him. And Mum, when I got in the room, Mum was just laid on the bed, not making any sense whatsoever. And you... So incoherent? Completely incoherent, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what happened next? What happened, um, from me going into that room, an hour later, my father died in front of my very eyes. And then they got mum to the hospital, where they tried to work on her at hospital. And then within three hours, she had died as well. So within like a four hour window, they'd both, both died. Who came, when, you, when you reported this and said, yeah. my father is very, very poorly, who, who, um, who A doctor came? came from the hotel. Yeah. And did anyone at that point say, say what it could be? They had no idea. I think they thought it was some kind of food poisoning or severe dehydration and um, because they were trying to get land in them to give them some sort of liquid mm. but it just wasn't working. Um, you had to give statements to the police, how, how come they got involved at this point? Because somebody had died in the hotel, as soon as dad died I had to go into a room uh, with the Egyptian police and give a statement and they just basically said it looks like your dad's had a heart attack and I kind of said yeah fine uh, I need to go and be with mum now. So then I went with mum to the hospital because in, in that first, in that statement that you gave, they asked if you believed anyone was to blame. Yeah, they said, do you accuse anybody of your father's death? And I said, no. And I, at that point, I was quite happy with that statement that I did give. And then the same question was asked of you after your mother yeah. sadly passed away. And you gave a different answer. I gave a different time. answer then because I'd seen the way that my dad died. And I saw the way that my mum died and they mirrored one another. And I just thought, this isn't coincidence, something's so you, happened. you changed so, your statement. So I changed my statement and I made an accusation that somebody was responsible for my mother and father's death. And that's when you say the tables turned. And that's exactly when way? the tables turned. There was no compassion. Um, there was, they kept second questioning me, are you sure? They said, your father's died of a heart attack. Um, your mother's died from grief and the gods have just taken her. Mum wasn't aware that dad died. She wasn't with it. Um, so as soon as he said that, I just thought there's something not quite right here. And you weren't allowed to fly home at this point. No, I wasn't allowed to fly home. you had to go to court, you had to I go through to court, the process. Yeah. Um, I you went were... to court the following day, um, where I was there from 10am in the morning till 2pm on the evening. And they, they asked you to sign something, didn't they? They asked me to sign a document of what my statement was, which I signed, 
but I also put at the bottom that I couldn't read what I was actually signing because it was all in Arabic. Now, the prosecutor said he wasn't going to take my case up for me. I had to withdraw that writing and do another statement. So I agreed to do it and he ripped the piece of paper in front of my eyes, just shredded it and he just put it in the bin and he just looked at me with a real, with a grin on his face, basically. There was no the compassion lo Loss of whatsoever. your parents isn't enough then to be no. there. You've got the three kids, they've lost their grandparents, mm. you've lost both of your parents, you don't understand you're in a foreign country. I mean, for you, this is just a living nightmare. Well, the, um, the Ministry of Tourism in Egypt say visitors to Egypt rightly expect the highest standards during their stay. Would you say you got those? No. We must await patiently the results of the ongoing investigation in Egypt and the coroner's inquest has, uh, that's been opened there. They said it was E. coli. Uh, the reports from the coroner here, it's come back inconclusive. Um, obviously, this is an ongoing case now. What do you say to, to, the, to the fact that it has been attributed to E. coli? With the Egyptian authorities, they do state that they've given a statement, but all it is is a post-mortem statement. They've given nobody any results. Nobody in the UK has seen any results as to what they've tested for. Right. Now, it was Thomas Cook that initially said E. coli because they'd sent their independent people in to test the food and all the surroundings, and they said E. coli. Now, the Egyptians then, in my opinion, jumped on board and thought, Thomas Cook to said Eli, E. coli, we'll go with E. coli. Well, interestingly, a few, uh, few weeks ago, it's the 13th of September, um, this is a world-renowned bacteriologist. Um, uh, he's an E. coli expert, and he uh, is Professor Hugh Pennington, and he said this. It would be unprecedented for even the nastiest E. coli that we know about to act that rapidly with that sort of terrible consequence. We said uh, in your introduction, he was one of the leading specialists of E. coli in the world, in your experience, in the amount of time that you've been dealing with it, have you ever seen a case where someone has died so rapidly? No, I've never seen a case where somebody died, say, within 12 hours of, of the, the initial infection. How does that make you feel? I get some positive things from that, because that's somebody with some knowledge that his opinion that E. coli did not kill them. Mm. My opinion, E. coli didn't kill them. The majority of the general public E. coli didn't kill them. What do you think killed your parents? There was something in that room that's killed them, whether it be something in the air, some sort of toxin or some sort of poison, but something killed them and got to them very, very quickly. And if your daughter hadn't said that she was feeling sick mm -hmm. that night, she would have been in that room she as well? She would have been in that room. God, that doesn't even bear thinking about. The, um, the case has been adjourned. You, you haven't really got any answers. For you, as a family now, you've got no siblings. Um, how do, how do you pick yourself up and move on from this? It's a struggle. Yeah. yeah. Every day, you know, it's a, it is a struggle. Um, I try and be as brave as I can and supportive. Um, I have three children and I need to keep strong for them now. But our whole world has been turned upside down. And your dad was the father figure of that. My dad was the father figure. Are you being up, oh. updated, uh, kept updated now by uh, No, by not the really. No, nothing. Nothing from the British authority, uh, nothing from the Egyptian authorities. I've got a very good relationship with Lancashire Police um, with regards to the coroner, and if there are any updates, they are very good at letting me know. Um, but, but other than that, nothing. And the trouble is with, uh, with this that, uh, that it was actually said, and I think it was the, the coroner, senior coroner, James Adley, um, he's requested all the relevant reports and documents from Thomas Cook and the Egyptian authorities, but he uh, warned that it could take months, even years, to get answers over what killed them. Yeah. I don't want it to take years. No. I cannot carry on with life until I get the answers that I want. It needs to be done quickly. Well, I hope you get those answers soon. I really do, for the sake of you and your family.